So let's go to work in the sample files I gave you with our tutorial for today. We're going to work in index.html. I've got some other pages that I'll show you in a bit. Let's open up that file in our browser. Here's what you'll find. And um, I've just set it up basically to keep track of some notes, but you can use it and retool it for your use. Um, if you'll open this file up in your editor, what you'll find is that uh, we've got essentially what we had at the end of the last dot, except that um, I've now separated out uh, the way they typically download it from your from the Twitter Bootstrap homepage, the basic Bootstrap CSS in one file, and then for that fixed top navigation, I've got the padding that makes room for that, and then I have the responsive style sheet coming in afterward. This helps set it up so that our site responds as it should when we resize it. Notice that when I take and resize the site, that bar works as it should. If I have these in a different order, for instance, if I take responsive and have it together with the other bootstrap CSS or have it above this inline, these inline styles down below, if I do it in this order, then when I resize this page after refreshing here, it's going to keep that top padding up at the top. And so if you run into that problem, that's the fix and they document it in their documentation. Um, so if you missed it, that's one way to get that working right. So now let's move on down to the nav bar. If you'll move down to line 37 in this file, you'll find these initial styles, div class, nav bar, fix top, followed by nav bar, inner, followed by the container. It takes these layers to set it up. If you want to open Bootstrap CSS, I've got it in our CSS folder. We're looking in the main file here. And you can go down to roughly line 2776 to view where they're setting up these classes. Notice that navbar inner is where they've placed the um, background gradients and colors. So if you want to work on the color of your navbar, that's the selector you'll need. As you go on down, you'll see what they've set up styles for various parts of what's going on in the navbar. So back to our markup, the next thing that we'll see is that we've got this button navbar which is hidden at first, but then it appears when we resize our window. So I'm going to go to my page and we'll see this button appear when we go down below 980 pixels wide. That's it. It's not yet functioning because we don't have the necessary uh, JavaScript hooked up. It's the collapsible plugin, but we're going to hook that up today by the time we're done. But that button, including with these span classes, this is what provides those three bars inside of the button saves the loading of an image, just a little bit of code in, instead. Um, that's what's going on there. Then we've got the place for our brand, if we want to put that in our bar. And now inside the div class nav collapse, and that class provides the container for all those things that we want to be hidden on a small viewport. So that's what's going to be revealed when we click on that collapse button. We'll see that in just a minute. But here, for the most part, is where we're going to set up our main links that we're going to use on our site. And you can see that the class active is what shows our current page as highlighted. So we can go to work here. I'm going to do just a couple of things. One of the things I'd like to do is add the um, little icon for the home link. And you can view that in the documentation. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and set up and do this on an eye tag. And we're just going to put a class of icon home, and we want to make it white. And so if you follow their documentation, they show you how to set it up just like this. We'll leave a space afterward. Icon home, icon white. Save that and refresh, and you'll see that show up. So long as you've got the proper relationship between your files, and so we've got the images organized in relationship to the CSS just like they gave us in the download from their main uh, documentation page. So now let's add a drop down to this navigation. I'm going to float that right over here um, by the Twitter home button. And I'm going to put it right after the original unordered list. So we're going to create a new navigation list. And this is just going to be a UL class equals nav, pretty much just like the one above it here. And we're going to make some modifications in just a minute, but the basic format is to create list items 
with links inside. And so I'm going to create a couple of those with just hash marks for their hrefs and call this link one and make a couple of copies and number those two and three. Now let's go ahead and take another step and float this to the right. So we're going to add the class pull right to that containing ul. You're going to see this float all the way over to the right. And because it's first in sequence, it's going to win the competition to get over to the right. So now to turn this into a dropdown. To do this, we're going to take our dropdown items and we're going to nest those inside of a parent ul that's in between here. So this is going to be our drop-down UL. We're going to add a class to that in just a second, but let's work on the basic structure first. Now, of course, we need a list item in between here. So this list item is going to be the containing element for this drop-down unordered list. And so we've got an unordered list with a list item that serves as the container for then our drop-down, drop-down there. Now, that drop-down UL is going to get a class of drop-down menu. And this list item is going con to contain its own class of drop-down. And inside of it, we're going to have a link that serves as the trigger to uh, drop this when we click. And we're just going to give it a hash for the href, and it's going to get a class of drop-down toggle. And then we've got to add a couple of additional attributes, including data toggle. This is going to link it up with our JavaScript in just a bit. And call this what you want. I'm going to call it uh, utility menu for now. And for good measure, we're going to put a little drop down caret symbol beside it and bootstrap is built to do this when we create a b element of class caret inside of here and that's going to give us that little drop down symbol so we've got li class drop down with the link inside of it and the child ul drop down menu inside of that so now let's refresh so the CSS is in place, but this is not going to be dropping down yet, so we've got to go hook up the JavaScript. We'll do that in just a second, but first let's add in a search field. I'm going to go back out to Bootstrap's documentation, and we're going to see an example here of the navbar search right here under Forms in the navbar. And so we can tell this search bar to pull left or pull right, and we can give it a placeholder. So I'm going to use this second example and copy that and place it in my code. And I'm going to have it over here actually competing for that right hand spot. So I'm going to just fix my indentation here. Notice they've got pull left on that. I'm going to change it to pull right. So we've got a form of class navbar search with input type text class search query and placeholder text of search which is going to put that little word search in there when we refresh refresh that and there's our search field all the way over to the right so we've got search in here we'd like to make our drop down drop down and we'd also like to make it so that when we go narrow that our collapse button actually works so that's what's coming next setting up the javascript